Okay, so what I want to talk about in this particular video is getting contrast under control. Now, if we take a look at this image of a tawny owl, um, you might think, yeah, it's underexposed, especially if you look at the histogram. But if we drag the histogram, forcibly drag the histogram over, okay, now we are going to generate a lot of noise, obviously, but we can see that the sensors actually recorded detail inside the eye and what was highlight detail is now blown the fact that we've got overly dark areas and overly bright areas indicates that there is too much contrast inside this image so if i go and reset and uh, get back to uh, where we started from the problem is contrast put into the image by Lightroom and this is an ongoing problem um, that's been quite prevalent with Lightroom since the inception of Lightroom 4 and basically Lightroom does um, background adjustments that um, under the old process version what was referred to as PB2010 you used to be able to see the adjustments inside the basics panel um, but now under pv 2014 uh, not to pb 2014 pb 2012 what am i on about stupid boy um under pv 2012 which came in with lightroom 4 you can no longer see the actual contrast adjustments um what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you how i get contrast under control in the majority of um, the images that I actually process um, and photograph myself, take myself and process and it's basically to do with camera calibration um, if we come into the camera calibration panel we can see we're in this profile Adobe standard now the first thing is if we switch this back out to a camera neutral which in this instance is a Nikon D4 um, bump Ooh. so now you can see what we've what, what we've actually experienced is a decrease in contrast let me just reset that for you so you can see it again look at the histogram and look at the fact that we've got a white indicator in the shadows that white indicator means that the image is clipping in the darks in both the red green and blue channels if we now switch to camera neutral yeah now we can see that the histogram hasn't moved much but the actual clipping indicators disappeared so what that means is we've actually dropped contrast we've started to reduce the contrast now if I switch from process version 2012 to process version 2010 yeah you can't see any difference in the image but if I go into the basics panel you can see that we've got the blacks at plus 5 the brightness at plus 50 and the contrast at plus 25 and this is the old default setting for Lightroom 3 mm. so what I'm going to do is just go over here into my presets and I'm just going to hit zero okay now what that's done is that's taken the blacks back to zero the brightness back to zero the contrast back to zero the other thing it's done if I go over to the uh, history panel and uh, undo that the other thing is that Lightroom under process version 2010 used to automatically put this rather shallow s-shaped medium contrast default tone curve into everything so what we'll do is we'll switch back to zero and you'll notice we've gone back to a linear tone curve okay so basically 
we can simplify this operation if I go reset yet again and this is the way I now do it the Lightroom keeps changing and um, trying to pin down the best and most efficient way of getting contrast under control um, since the inception of Lightroom CC and we got these continuous little updates it's a bit like trying to hit a bloody moving target but anyway if we go over to our presets this image is now as imported and with the Lightroom background adjustments if we go and hit zeroed and then we go and hit camera calibration and we switch out to camera neutral and then what we do is we switch to 2010 and then because everything's reset in the basics and the tone curve by hitting this zeroed we don't need to do anything else apart from switch back to 2012 come back up into the basics panel now but before we do that we go into the tone curve you'll notice we've got this inverted s shape curve now yeah and if we go into the basics panel we've actually dropped one stop of exposure we've knocked out minus 33 contrast and we've increased the blacks by plus 25 so in essence if we reverse those actual adjustments down to minus 25 plus 33 and plus one and the plus one not so much but definitely the contrast and the blacks if we reverse those two out those are the sort of background adjustments that Lightroom CC is actually applying to all your images in the background in the background and also the exact opposite of this PB swap curve which is actually the uh, medium contrast tone curve yeah so if we switch that back to um, PB swap there we go so back up to the basics panel and just double click on exposure right and then because we zeroed everything out we haven't got any sharpening on so we'll go and double click sharpening and that'll put the default 25 sharpening back on and uh, we'll go and double click on color as well and if we have a look at a before and after hey, hey it's quite shocking isn't it and there we go at 100 percent now you can see that the image on the right is a very good basis upon which to start our image processing and really and truly the one on the left which is lightroom's default import is actually from a contrast point of view somewhat untenable as a processing start point especially if you are not like me um, if you are in any way unfamiliar with what to do or how to start to process an image on oh god where do we go what do we do what slider do we start moving then adopting this workflow before you start to do your actual process to enhance the image is a really really good idea so what i'll do is in the um, uh, description panel below i'll put the stages um, of this contrast reduction and um, so you can sort of follow along um, or either that or just keep pausing the video anyway let's um, just nip over to another image um, bum, 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 bum. Um, one of uh, my friend paul atkins's golden retrievers uh, belting along a bit with a tennis ball in his mouth has anybody nobody ever told this dog that you shouldn't run with something in your mouth but well there you go hey ho now yeah the image itself isn't too bad but it still suffers from high contrast not quite so much but there is an awful lot more detail um, available to us in the uh, face of this um, golden retriever uh, than you might think and what we'll do is we're going to do the same thing again we'll click the zeroed preset then what we'll do is we'll come all the way down to camera calibration we'll switch to camera neutral we'll go for a pv swap from 
process version 2012 back to 2010 and then just simply swap it back again go back to basics double tap on the exposure and yes it's looking a bit thin a bit veiled a bit washed out but there's a whole lot of ways around that and you know if we go and look at the, the before and after we are very very lacking in detail in these um, upper highlight regions of the dog's face and now we can start to see that detail coming back and in the darks um, believe you me there is no way that dog's muzzle is that black and there is no way his gums are that black mm -hmm. so maybe if we on in this particular instance we double click the blacks and bring them back down to zero in other words we make them a little bit darker can you see up his nostrils here they, these nostrils are just like great big black blobs we can actually see not that we really want to see up a dog's nose but we can see that we've actually got some form of detail in there how do we get around the uh, washed out bit well before we do that let's go back down to the details panel let's double click on the sharpening double click back on the color noise to bring everything back to where it should be we could go to lens corrections we could say remove chromatic aberration which is something i didn't actually do on the tawny owl image naughty me and then we can go back to the basics panel and maybe just add a little punch of clarity and then come down to the hsl panel which is my favorite panel inside a lightroom and basically we can go to the saturation and we can increase the saturation of the oranges a little bit and of the yellows a little bit and now we're bringing a lot of punch back into this dog this dog's face but you know i mean the two images are as different as chalk and cheese and we haven't really done anything so you know apart from uh, basically press a few buttons but the one thing we have done above all else is we've got contrast under control so i hope that lesson serves some purpose for you this is how i always begin my image processing simply one overriding golden rule to image processing get contrast under control before you start to do any image enhancements okay i hope that this video has proved useful to you and i'll see you inside the next one two root